Hi everyone, it's Tammy from Nutmeg Notebook. So today we're doing another live show. As you know, we have moved to Sundays instead of Tuesdays. So now Tom and Tammy Live is on Sundays at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So thank you so much for joining us. If you're new to our blog and our YouTube channel, I'll just let you know that we are whole food, plant-based, SOS free. That stands for salt, oil, and sugar free. And no, we don't suffer. We eat amazing, delicious food. And this is my husband, Tom. We don't suffer. We what? don't suffer. Some people think SOS free, oh, it's not a based It's not a restrictive diet. It's oh, a very it's, generous no, diet. It is. It's a generous diet. So this is Tom. Hello, everyone. My partner in crime. I'm just doing my final sound checks here to make sure you can hear us. Sounds like you can. Awesome. And and I haven't So oh. today we're going to show you some really fun new kitchen gadgets that we have. So we have this uh, baggy opener hands-free holder and one of the gals that took one of our weight loss classes gave us this and so we're going to talk about how we use this and how it can be used for storage as well as the super cubes and these are something brand new to us we actually had two of our followers recommend these so that last month our, that was last month on the cruise yeah last month on the cruise um, we did a couple of cooking demonstrations and one of the gals on the cruise stood up and told us about these and how great they are for freezing, you can freeze soups or beans or you know all kinds of things, whatever you're gonna freeze, because they take up a lot less room in your freezer than what we typically use, which are these Rubbermaid containers. So Tom's gonna do a little demo about this. And then what was interesting, after we got home from the cruise like a week or two later, another follower, emailed us all about these and said, you guys need to know about these. Yeah. I found them and I'm using them and they're amazing. And Tom had actually already just ordered them based on the recommendation um, from our the friend folks. on the cruise. Yeah, we can't take credit for like discovering these. They were, <laughs> they were brought to us by, by some of you folks. So anyway, we've done our, our very first- um, Freezing in there. Freezing them then. I, you know, we made some soups last week and I dispensed those out and froze them. And then we made some more soups on our batch cooking today. Um, so we're going to have some fun with that. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and on the storing the story, um, I often go out to the freezer to get the soups and the whole top shelf is all of these um, rubber made containers in there. This shape. This is one where um, from I opened up, it was frozen earlier this week. And what happens with these is they hold two servings because they're four cups. Four cups? Four and a half cups? That's, well, we put four cups in them usually. Okay. And so I have to thaw the whole thing to get a two-cup serving. And so when I went online and investigated these super cubes, by the way, it's, it's from a small um, company out here in California uh, that was, these are invented by Michelle and Jake. So, um, so Michelle and Jake, if you're, if you're online, say hi. Um, Tom emailed them to let them know that we were going to do a demo of their product and they emailed right back because guess what? We're all like on self quarantine right now and everybody's yeah. home. <laughs> so they answered yeah. right back. So it's, when we first uh, looked at them online, it seemed like such a good idea because you know what? They're rectangular, they're square. Uh, you put them in the baggie, they can stack. And so I'm always shuffling these around in the freezer, digging you know, it to the back to find my favorite soup of the day. Uh, but the real issue is that you you always get, have this half a soup left over if we're not both having soup. We we always eat together, but we usually do not eat the same thing because of our whole batch uh, prepping philosophy and our on our our batch prepped fast food uh, that you will uh, practice that you'll see on other videos. So um, anyway, so we were very motivated to try these because it just seemed to make an awful lot of sense on the front well, end. Well, and we share a lot of food with our two adult children and so i'm always having to go buy more containers because i'm always sending my containers filled with food home with them and my our daughter's really good about sending them back or returning them to us but our son lives further away and so it can be a couple of months sometimes before i'll get the containers and so i thought well this would be really great because we won't have to give them the containers we can just put 
the soups or taco lentils or whatever we have in plastic baggies to send them home with them. Yeah, Michelle and, and so, Jake did make it. Okay. I noticed on the website, very, you know, uh, you'll find it in a lot of our correspondence. It'll be from Tammy and Tom at Nutmeg Notebook. Tammy and Tom. And I've noticed on your website, it's Michelle and Jake. So That just flows better. Just like Tammy and Tom <laughs> flows better. <laughs> it's all about the flow of it, honey. Okay. It's all about how... Yeah, okay, just, so well, do you want to step in then and talk about what yeah. you've done? Okay, yeah. I'll switch uh, places I'll, with you yeah, and I'll I, moderate. So here's the thing. If you have any questions... Put them in the comments. We will moderate those. We'll try to answer your questions. And we're going to, you know, stick around after Tom's demo and we'll do a Q&A. Anything that you guys want to ask us, you know, um, about food prep or batch cooking or if you just want to chat, that would be fantastic. So if you have a question, do four question marks, then your question, and then end with four question marks. And that just helps that question pop out on the comment stream and it can start moving pretty fast sometimes so that'll just help us out okay, okay. i'm going to switch places right. with you honey and we just need to check the, the okay camera. while he's doing that let me tell camera you we have too. a blog as well as the youtube channel so you can check us out at nutmegnotebook.com yeah i'm gonna go adjust the camera he's gonna adjust the camera because you know he's a lot taller than me and so he had the camera set for my height which was going to cut off his head so he'll get that fixed there. So we did batch cooking this morning. We got quite a bit of stuff made. We might even open up the refrigerator and show you what we did today. And we have a little bit of it out here. I'm going to go ahead and sit in your chair. Okay. All right. All right. Awesome. Shirt sure, tucked in, ready to go. <laughs> okay. So uh, as we we're saying, these were brought to us by, by our viewers and, and class attendees. And a couple things I know about them. These are made to be very flexible, so you can pop, pop out the frozen cubes um, easily. Another big structural item on these, because we do own some silicone bakeware that Tammy uses for her muffins and such, and one of the common uh, themes on silicone bakeware is it's very floppy and flimsy. And I wouldn't want to be, if I was still dealing with hot, this is warm soup, but if I was putting hot soup in here, I wouldn't want to have it flopping around. So they actually have built in here, don't know what it's made out of, but there's, they're very rigid, they're very solid, and so it's not going to flop over and spill everything out on you. I bet Michelle and Jake could answer that for us. Well, I don't. I didn't want to say that there's a wire in there. It might be some but kind of. It feels of like something. So somebody's material. already asked where we where they can get these, and we actually have these on our Amazon page. Yeah. And did you link to them already? Yeah, below? down in the show notes, but the description down below, you'll find a link to the to the two cup, uh, the the double two cup one and the quadruple one cup one. Those are my names. Those are not Michelle and Jay. This is the quadruple one cup, <laughs> and this is the double two cup. So uh, my terms. Uh, but yeah, the, the links are down below, and then you'll also easily find them on the Nutmeg Notebook, um, the amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Nutmeg Notebook. That link is also down below. Takes you to our full page of kitchen products. And I've got these very near the top right now. They're very easy to spot in this wonderful, what color is this officially? I would say that that is teal, a teal, teal blue. Okay. Teal blue, right. teal blue. Cool. Teal. Another cool uh, design thing here, uh, and thank you to Michelle and Jake for this. That looking at it this way, you get milliliters, 500 milliliters. So all the European-based folks will be happy with the metric system availability. Mm -hmm. But you turn it around, and we have our imperial cups. And so when I fill these, I fill them to the two cup line, and I don't have to deal with the milliliters or any conversions. So the double one has that, and then the single ones actually show a one-half cup mark and uh, a one-cup mark in each compartment. So. And they re did reply, and they said that there is a steel-embedded rim to make it excellent. extra sturdy. Okay. And they're very happy to answer any other questions that you guys have. Yeah, if you do have a, a you know, you use the question marks like Tammy uh, suggested, and then Michelle and Jake, jump in and, and answer those as you wish. That okay, would be so awesome. Someone's asking if we like the one-cup or the two-cup one's better and actually i think we're going to like both yeah. because it's it's going to depend on what your serving sizes are like or how many people you're feeding in your home so um but i i think that they'll have yeah, yeah a lot of time tammy will take one of our uh, delicious soups that she has engineered and made and put it on a potato. And in that case, you might not want a full two cup serving. A one cup serving might be plenty to put on top of a potato or, or a few potatoes that she's put together. So 
That does vary a lot. Yeah, these uh, do not go in the microwave, someone's asking. No, these, these are, are not, not for baking, they these are, are not, not for cooking. No, yeah, these, these are, are for using for the freezer. Yeah, and the instructions state really clearly, these are not, to not be confused with the baking siliconeware. These are made to be flexible so that the, the freezing, the frozen foods can pop out and so forth. Um, but they are, are certainly not engineered for being used in the oven. So, and, and Michelle and Jake made that very clear in the instructions. They are oven safe up to 415 oh. degrees. To how much? But the lids are not oven safe. Because okay. they, they are food grade silicone. Someone's asking me if they will retain odors. Now we have frozen some things over there. I know, I, I can't tell you because I, we haven't I, used these I, a lot, I, but other silicone um, products that we use do not retain yeah, odors. And, and when I opened these up, that was a concern about any new product. Sure. Any new product, not that it's silicone. But <laughs> I, I did a thorough, I did a thorough smell test on arrival, and there was no smell. No, I think they're talking about will it absorb odors? Absorb odors. What, okay. Yeah. So, like, if you made some Indian soup and put it in there, you yeah. know, okay, that has very strong. Um, and you don't flavors. notice that in your other silicone bakeware. No, my other silicone bakeware does not okay. do that. But you can bake with these. That, that opens up It goes new into the oven up to 415 degrees. degrees. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's... That makes some new possibilities. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I'm thinking like individual cornbreads. I mean, yeah, you could do, you fun. know, yeah, yeah. some you know, little um, yeah. shepherd pie. Yeah, just, just to be kind of reiterate here, we're brand new to these. So we're doing, this is kind of, I don't know, I, I don't like YouTube videos that are about openings, box openings, because they don't really accomplish anything. But this is kind of a reveal because this is our very first uh, time ever freezing anything in these. So we're gonna see how they, uh, uh, I did pop out these two as a practice, I confess, but we'll pop these out <laughs> in front of you so you can see how that went for me just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we're kind oh, of... Oh, I should have taped you when you were doing that. That would have been... I should have been taping you. Oh, I was, anyway. I was okay, a pro so because I had first? a pro tip from Michelle and Jake. They told me to pop out the middle ones first. Okay, so why don't you show people okay. how... Do you want to... Okay, so filling these is kind of... Uh, I got to get to... I'm going to keep the two cup thing. So the okay, big... Okay, so this is the um, split pea and yam soup. And the recipe is on our blog at Nutmeg Nopa. Would you go get me that bigger that... nylon, the gray nylon spatula? This one's too little. Mm -hmm. Or it's working. It's fine. You, I can get you a bigger one if you want. Oh dear, I made a mess on the edge. Um, I am inclined to want to clean it up before we snap the lid on just to keep the to keep it going. I'll here. get you a paper towel. Uh, a note about filling this, you notice that, you'll notice that the fill marks are short of the top of the thing because you don't want to fill them all the way to the top because food expands when it freezes. So, um, here you go. I'll use that other one for the beans. So that, what kind of soup is this? What do we have in here? This is the split pea and yam. And mm. I, today I used the Hannah yams, which are the white ones. And they're just, I just love the taste of them. Yeah. And they hold their shape a little more so, when they're how we cooked. Did it. So anyway, so yeah, it's like this. Yeah, they Simple can see enough. it pretty good. Okay. And then there's the lid, the lid pops so on. So how many scoops winds up into the one cup? That's the metric, I want the domestic. Now I brought you this other one if you wanted. I was gonna use that for the beans. Okay. I don't think I well, could. Well, I thought, see I gave you that smaller ladle because I thought for the one cup that it would be better for Okay. Getting it in there. I don't remember how I filled them the first go round, the ones that are frozen. Okay, so um, Super Cubes is saying that they use the half cup tray to freeze salsa, hummus, pesto, and their favorite vegan chocolate pudding. Ooh, are they vegan? I don't know that. Oh. That, that they're not limiting the sale of their product to vegans. <laughs> <laughs> on one of the, uh, on the thumbnail, on the thumbnail that I made for this video, there okay. you'll see a, a, a freezer full of soup, and then I positioned the product, uh, the picture of the trays over the other half of the freezer that has a picture of things that we don't have in our freezer. Oh, okay. So. Um, yes, they will stack. You can put the lid on them. And then you oh, can, I stacked them. I stacked all four. Then you can stack them. Yeah, I stacked all four of them on the first go around. Uh -huh. Okay, so now I've, now I've made a mess here. But if I had a silicone here. spatula, I could just scoot all that right in there. 
Okay, so he's going to go grab a spatula. See, this is what happens when you do live. Oh, and he just hit the light. <laughs> they would they would know that if you didn't tell them. Well, it Why probably, are you snitching me off? <laughs> they could hear it on your on your mic. Okay, there you go. Looking good. Beautiful. Okay. Good job. What's that chef with the spiked hair? He can just move over. Nice. Okay. All right. So those are ready to go and lit them up. And and don't push down on the whole thing. You you squeeze the lid on because there's a, a very generous rim that has that steel ring embedded in it, which makes this a very safe thing to do. Yep. There was a lot of thought went into designing these things. I'm impressed. I know. It's pretty amazing. Those look great. Okay. All right. So good okay. job, Jake and Michelle. Oh, Michelle and Jake. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. okay. So, uh, oh, you were going to do the beans, but you didn't. Um, but that's okay. You did all soup well, and no, all No, I'm going to do the beans into the baggie on the, when we're done with these. Oh, gotcha. The, bean, this is the beans I'm going to put in there. Okay. What do you have in this one? Okay. This is a soup that you made last week. This is lentil. This is lentil soup. Um, which lentil soup was it? Hearty lentil. Vegetable stew. Stew. Okay. So. Crowd favorite. All right, so this, um, a, another pro tip that Michelle and Jake offered me is right before you're going to pop them out, let them sit on the counter for just a few minutes uh, just to get a little bit of release on the bottom of, of the frozen brick. This is a quartz counter, so it is good on sucking up a little bit of heat energy or, or giving off some heat energy. So, so this is just, it just, look at it, it just lifted right out. Oh, someone says we could bake the quinoa um, oat muffin mix in these and make little mini loaves. We could. That's yeah. a great idea. So, so it comes out nice and clean. I've got a little frost on top, but that's my doing. And So why did you get frost on top of those? Because, uh, you know what, because that wasn't all the way cool when I put them oh, away. Oh, so it, if you, it made condensation. It, if you and let the soup be room temperature, you wouldn't get so much of that, but okay. I think we were going somewhere. That's a good tip. So, um, Michelle and Jake, maybe you can answer just putting these loose in the bag like this side by side, I would imagine they'd be easy enough if they like get stuck together in the freezer. They're going to break right apart. I don't see that that would be an issue. I didn't know, uh, I mentioned to Tammy about maybe wrapping them in a little bit of cellophane, but that's using more plastic, which we don't necessarily want to promote. Um, oh, look at that. Four of them fit across in this bag. Nice. That's How great. How cool is that? I love it. All right. And then you can just label it and date it. And then you, we can just take out one serving at a time. time. And yeah. if we're going to send home food with the kids, we can wow. just pull some out okay. and put it in containers for Okay, them. so here's the big ones. Okay. All and right. this is the... Um, I'm going to put this away. Okay. And then this is the curry ginger butternut squash soup yeah. that he froze. And this is one of the recipes you get when you subscribe to the blog, which is free. And then you get some exclusive recipes that are just for subscribers. And that's, this is one of those recipes. And so I made that. Okay, so this is... this is one of my favorite soups. Yeah, these didn't, this did not frost over. Right, because so it was cooled down before you put it in there. Yeah. Great. Okay, so that just lifts out. Uh oh, I didn't open the bag first. Help. <laughs> okay, there's there's a helpful hint. You can get the open the bag. Well, that's not a freezer bag. That's a regular bag. You need a freezer bag. I have freezer bags right here. There you go. Yeah, that's just a sandwich bag, not for the freezer. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So one. Now these full servings, I thought I would do single dose, um, single unit. Yeah, I would only just put one in okay. each bag. Yeah, I mean, you could do the bigger bag and do multiples in there, you I guess. Could. But we have a lot of these bags on the inventory, I saw. You've got a lot of more boxes of these. Well, I buy them at Costco. And there's, you know, probably something that we could do that would be more environmentally friendly. Yeah. So we'll have to look into that. Okay. Now my fingers are good and chilled. And they, you know, they, they come... Up pretty clean, easy enough to clean. Yeah, we'll just wash them with warm, soapy water. It'll be great. Okay, good job, Tom. You can put those in the freezer. Yep. So, anybody have any other questions 
about that. So um, Jake and Michelle, or Michelle and Jake, said that four of the two cup cubes will fit in one gallon size bag. Okay, so one of the big bags would hold all four of them. Yeah, yeah. so we usually, someone's asking, tippy toes, I like that, tippy toes, is asking how do you reheat your frozen soup? Well, we do it in the microwave, but you could put it in a saucepan on top of the stove and you could heat it up that way as well. Silicone bags would work well to store them, someone is offering. So, and yes, label the bags. So whenever we um, put containers like this in our freezer, we always label them. And we have, there's a roll of labels on our Amazon page and um, they dissolve real easily. If you peel it off, as soon as you take the item out of the freezer, if you're using reusable containers, then you, know, you don't have to worry about running hot water and, and getting them off. But if you forget to do that, they do dissolve in hot water. And I think it's, I think it's a roll of 500 that lasts for a very long time. And they're the least expensive and easiest labels to remove that I have found. So those are also on our Amazon shopping page. Uh, and then we also put the, uh, the date on them too. That way we're always checking our inventory in the freezer so that we can eat up the oldest stuff first. So, yeah, product name and, and date. And I, yes. do, and I do, when I go out there, I do look for the oldest date because sometimes there is newer stuff of yeah. the same thing. Yeah, so, so that's the Super Cube. So we're, we're really impressed. We're excited to um, use these some more and see what that does. It should help for people who don't have room in their freezers for the large containers because this will take up a lot less space. Yeah. If, you, if you take a look, um, well, you'll probably wind up doing a blog post on these with some freezer photos. Yeah, I with, should. Uh, but if you look at the thumbnail, you can see, obviously, they're like little building blocks. You can really densely store, um, uh, you know, soups and these. Soups and these. We've talked about before in our, some of our conversations with Chef AJ about using the, what, are, what size are the little freezer bags? Quart um, size. Of just using the quart size like we're going to demonstrate here shortly and then laying that flat and putting it in there. But I can kind of see them slipping and sliding around on each other as well. Um, are they on the Canada page? On our Amazon Canada I page? I will go over and add them to the Canada page. I've not yet done that. Because um, someone wants to know if they can be shipped to Canada. And Tina just ordered both of them. She says super nice product. So that's awesome. Okay. okay. Well, great. Uh, and thank you so much, Michelle and Jake, for joining us. Thank that you was for fun. inventing them. That is really a cool new kitchen widget yeah so, and if you have other products we'd like to know about it <laughs> oh we got we got to cruise their site a little bit we do more, we so. do okay so um if anybody else has questions you can ask about so, that shall we see and what happens with this with this other this other manual thing here tawana reels just ordered them as well and so now we're going to show you this little gadget so now, Jeanette, now, yeah, this was another, was, uh, yeah, another. We can't take credit for finding this. No, so it was found for us. Jeanette, one of our students in one of our ultimate weight loss classes, was telling us about this, and so she gave us one of these. And it's called. You want to show them? It's called the baggy opener. Did you put that on the Amazon page? I don't know. <laughs> okay. It's been a crazy. Something happened today. We got up this morning, and then suddenly it was three o'clock. And we don't know, I mean, we did a whole bunch of batch cooking. We went for a four mile walk. Well, what happened was it was 11 o'clock before we even started doing batch cooking. And we were like, how did that happen? We got up like at six o'clock this morning. Yeah. How did, how was it 11 before we even started batch cooking? You know, so we batch cooked until three and then had to get ready to do this. So it's yeah. been a crazy day. So anyway, this is called baggy opener. And Tom will add it to our Amazon page. <laughs> if you want to switch, I, I can, can do that right now. No, because you you're going to do this. Oh, I've I'm, never used I'm it. I'm doing it. I, I will get that added. I'll do it. I'll do it right while, now. While, while we're doing the, the Q&A. You're going to do it right now? Yeah, okay. I'll do it right now. Is there an Amazon page open there for you? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. So anyway, uh, yeah, Janelle 
gave us this thing, and we just re I actually tried it out to bag up our dried beans because we did go to Whole no Jeanette gave it Jeanette to us. gave it to us. I did um, I bought a five pound bag of, of black beans, and so I needed to break it up into what, how Tammy cooks, which is in one pound increments. So uh, you, I'm going to use a freezer bag here since this is a uh, a cooked bean and not a dried bean because I think I put the dried beans in in regular ones. So it just clips on like that and you fluff it out and how am I going to know how many beans to put in here? Well, I thought I gave you a measuring cup. Oh, I didn't see it. It's over there. And so just like if you want to do like two cups Okay. in that one. All right. I predict that there might be a mess. <laughs> I'm going to use this. Uh -huh. thing. There was very little mess with the super cubes. <laughs> I want that. I want, I'm just going to scoop with the cup. Okay, so there's one cup, two cups. Do you want two cups in here? Two cups in the baggie? Sure. And the nice thing about the baggies is that you can lay them flat. So if you don't have a standalone freezer, if you have like a refrigerator with a freezer on top and you have a smaller amount of freezer space, the nice thing is that once you close that, yeah. then you can lay it flat, freeze it flat, and then you can stack yeah. them. Now if you want to, I, I want to check my camera view here because I'm going to sh show that, getting the air out a little bit. Can you switch back to the YouTube view? Let me see what we're, let me see what we're seeing here. Sure. Okay. All right. So, so I lay it down and let it start to go flat, and then you fold this over and get as much flatness involved as you can, and then ziplock that so it doesn't get away. So then you've got a very nice um, air airless bag of beans there. do one more. Okay, I just added a two pack of these to the to our Amazon page. A two pack? Yeah. That it's the most reasonable um, okay. way to buy it. Okay. And then you can share one with a friend. I think okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So okay. I made these beans. These weren't actually gonna go in the freezer, but I know you're doing this for demo because I'm actually yeah. gonna turn these into delicious okay. refried beans yeah. um, using the recipe that's in our Mexican Fiesta cooking okay, webinar. So we're laying it down, we're folding it over to squish out the air before you seal it because if you seal it too soon you wind up with an air bubble in there. And there you go. And then you can... Another airless, mm -hmm. almost vacuum sealed bag. I hope that one's, so that one's leaking because I didn't get it sealed all the way. So you got to make your, sure your seals are good. This is kind of, I mean this works but I can see where the super cubes would be a lot safer. And then you stack them in your freezer thus, like that. Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, somebody wanted to know if I sort my dried beans, what I do is I have a small like cookie sheet that I, I usually cook a pound at a time. And so I'll put those out on that cookie sheet. It's a rimmed cookie sheet. And then I will sort through and look for any little pebbles. And then if I, you know, if I find anything, I pick it out and any broken pieces I'll pull out. And then I will uh, take and put all of my beans in a colander and then run cold water over them to wash them. So that's what I do. And it seems to work pretty good. To, to do it on a rimmed cookie sheet because I can have them all start at one end and then you know slowly just move them over to the other end and that way I can see if there is any debris in it. So someone's having trouble with the um, video not streaming, it's buffering and that doesn't seem to be happening to anyone else so it must be your internet connection she said it happened on Thursday when we did a live on Thursday as well yeah our internet speed here I, I actually checked it earlier today and it's it's a, a ridiculous amount of upload speed like 19 megabits per second and the required amount is four so we've got like 
Yeah. Four it, times the necessary amount of upload yeah. bandwidth. Yeah. So it's not, we're not having any of that happening here. We're watching the live feed ourselves and it's not buffering for us. And it could be because so many people are on the internet today where you live. You know, I don't know if you're in a home or It could be a neighborhood apartment. by neighborhood thing. It could be a neighborhood kind of thing. So sorry that it's not working for you, Stephanie. But yeah, watch the replay then and it should be fine. So, um, so that's it for us for the gadgets that we found today. And I'm just going to scroll back and make sure we didn't miss any other questions. And... And see what if anybody's asking anything else. I think we I think we caught everything. This feels weird not having control of the computer. Ha ha ha. People are gonna think their screens are reversed since we're on different <laughs> sides. It's true. That's funny. So somebody else uses a round pizza pan with a lip on it to sort their beans, and she learned to do that from her mother-in-law, who is from India. So that mm -hmm. that would be very similar to what I do. Um, do you all know what the difference is between freezer bags and regular? I just realized I put some soup in a regular Ziploc gallon bag uh, yesterday. Well, they're much thicker, and so they are actually made to withstand the temperature of the freezer, so you're less likely to get freezer burn on whatever you yeah. put in the freezer Yeah, they're listing bags. freezer, storage, and snack. They're listing, and they're color-coded. I don't know if you can see the, the three color codes there. They're color-coded at the top based on what the, the, the zip tab looks like. And so far as I can tell, it's just a difference of how the thickness of the plastic, whether it's a real thin for a sandwich bag, kind of a quick use item. Storage might be for like dried dried items and then the freezer bags of course are going to get bounced around inside the freezer and and when things freeze they can have sharp edges so they're going to be more durable. So um, I believe it's just the thickness of the plastic and probably the price, you know, the price goes up as the thickness of the material uh, increases. So, so that's what I believe on that. But, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, um, Anybody else have any questions for us? We could show them a little bit about what we made, what we you batch wanna, prepped You want to cover what we batch prepped? I'll, sure. I'll, I'll uh, go we'll and switch. adjust the camera a little bit. Okay. So you saw that we did the, a pot of black beans in our Milthy multi-cooker. And then we also did the split pea and yam soup. And that recipe is on the blog, so you can find that. And I have instructions for stovetop, uh, slow cooker, or how to do it in the pressure cooker. And I really like the Hannah yams in it. That's what I used today because they retain their shape and um, they don't cook down to mush like the yellow or, or the regular uh, orange yams do. So um, I really like using those in that soup. And it uses Herbs de Provence which is one of my favorite, favorite spice blends. So I'll show you a little bit what we did today. Let me move that out. So of course we did our salad prep. So we did 12 of these salads and these are batch prepped salads. They're ready to go for the week. Oh, Tom says I need to go up higher with it. And so we each eat one of these every day for one of our main meals. And that's something that we've been doing since 2013 when we adopted a whole food plant-based lifestyle. And did you have a question? Oh, when you're done, there's a question that if you can tell us more about the beet boost. I just want to put that on the list of oh. things to discuss, but okay, go ahead sure. with this. Well, do you want to go grab it? Yeah. It's up there in that just, cupboard. Just as a reminder, And sure. so the reason we batch prep these is ahead of time is because I got so tired of dragging out all of the ingredients every day to make salads for us. And I thought, this is not sustainable. But we wanted to be able to eat a big salad every day for one of our meals. That's one of the principles that Dr. Furman teaches. Um, and that he was one of the first plant-based doctors that I started following. And so I thought I have to find an easier way to do this. And Tom can link, can you link to Simple Salad Batch Prep? We have a video and a blog post all about how to do this. And so Tom will link to that and put it in the show notes below the video. And so as you can see, I made 
12 of them, and they do fit in our refrigerator. This refrigerator is really big, it's deep, and so you, we just have to get creative with how we put them in there. And so you can see that this stack here goes upside down, and that's how it fits because there is a little shelf um, bracket right there. And so that's how I get that all to fit. So all 12 of them are there. This was one salad that was left over from last Sunday, actually. And Tom's going to eat that today because he didn't eat one at lunchtime. And so he'll have that for dinner tonight. Then I had some sweet potatoes that I needed to use up. So this is the fall pudding. And this is just regular, the orange sweet potatoes and bananas. And I, I did put a little bit of oat milk in it because um, they weren't as soft as I had wanted them to be. And then some uh, cinnamon and nutmeg. And so we've got nice little puddings going there. And then we cooked potatoes. Oh, this is a little bit of my Alfredo sauce. So that is, it's super delicious. Tom had some of this at lunchtime. Now these are a couple of Hannah yams and these just, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these yet, but they needed to be roasted. So we did those. Which video did you want added to show notes? Simple salad, batch, batch prep. prep. Okay, and thanks. there's a blog post. You could just go to the blog and get the oh, link right. from the blog because it has the, the video embedded. Thing. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And then we also did our Yukon Gold potatoes. And this is a, probably about three and a half, four pounds. Um, we bought them in bulk because that's all we could find the other day. So I don't remember the exact poundage, but we usually do about three pounds a week. And you know, we can make smashed potatoes out of these. We have a blog post and a video for that. They're better than french fries and they're made in the air fryer and they are amazing. And so um, I'll also take these and I like them just as a snack or I'll take the taco lentils recipes also on the blog and cut some of these open, put them on a plate or I'll air fry them, smashed um, potatoes in the air fryer. Put, and I make what's called ponachos. And so instead of using chips, I'm using the air fried potatoes and I'll do the taco lentils and then a vegan cheese sauce and cilantro and my homemade salsa and some chopped green onions. Oh my gosh, so good. If you like Mexican food, those are amazing. And then these are my favorite, favorite potatoes. These are the Japanese sweet potatoes. And all we could find this last week were these little ones. And so I usually have, you know, a fairly good size one. So I figured I'm gonna have to have at least two of these every day to equal one of the big ones. So we got that all done. And then this here, because we like to be fair. So Tom is one of six kids, and when it comes to food, <laughs> he really likes to make sure he gets his fair share. And so I make cheese sauce, and he gets a dish of it, and I get a dish of it. That way he gets his that fair one's share. That says Tom right there. <laughs> And so I just label them, and that way we each get our cheese sauce. So funny. Okay. And then we also, because we had the oven going, so we roasted a butternut squash. You can see here. And this one, we just cut it in half and scooped out the inside, turned it upside down on a rimmed baking sheet with a silpat mat and the potatoes were cooking at 400 degrees, so we just put the squash in there as well. And then we also had a little acorn squash that needed to be roasted, and so we did the exact same thing with it. And I think we roasted them about probably 45 minutes, um, if I'm not mistaken. So we have that, and then we have the black beans, and we have the soup that we made. And so, uh, and Tom made rice yesterday. He always makes a big batch of rice when he makes it, and that way we can just freeze it and have it in small containers, and then we can pull it out of the freezer four cups at a time. Sandra Stevens is asking if you have a cheese sauce recipe. There's there is one. Donna's vegan cheese sauce is on the blog, 
and then we sell a cooking webinar called Mexican Fiesta cooking webinar and there's a queso sauce um, cheese sauce on that. That one's more spicy. Yeah. And that one, that one is more spicy. Yeah. So that's what we have. <laughs> okay. Linda, Joan is mentioning that her husband is one of five and she understands because they never had leftovers as a child and nothing was left. That's yeah. right. You had to be strategic about your first serving on the first go around because there may not be a second go around. So, oh, yeah. Um, uh -huh. and, and see, and I already, I made salsa yesterday. And so I have salsa. We used quite a bit of it, but I, I just make my own salsa. And there's Tammy's Easy Red Salsa is on the blog. Mm. And so... So that's what we got done today. So I think we're in pretty good shape yeah. for the week. Plus, we have all kinds of things in the freezer. So I have taco lentils in the freezer, and I have a wide variety of soups in the freezer that we can draw from. So, and Tom just, he eats his oats every morning for breakfast, so we don't have to think about that. And I'll have some kind of little vegetable and either some oat groats, and I have oat groats because I made oat groats last week and I froze them. So I'll get a container of oat groats out uh, for this coming week. And um, that's, how, that's how we batch cook. So that took, batch cooking took about three hours to do all of that different stuff, plus make our lunch. And so it went pretty good. And then that saves us because now we don't have to cook all week long. We just reheat food. And people are always asking us how we reheat it. And we either reheat in the microwave oven, the air fryer, or on top of the stove. And I know that there is a way to do it in a pressure cooker where you uh, stack everything, but I've never done it. I haven't had a need to do that, but I'm sure there's probably a YouTube video if you look that up. Oh, this rice goes back in too. This is one of Tom's rice containers. You've actually got two, two containers of rice in Kay. here right now. So, uh, okay, so I posted, yeah, so I posted about Beet Boost this morning because I was showing people what I had for my breakfast. And um, so I had mixed up a little bit of Beet Boost. I just, it's a powder. I just mix it with water. And this comes from the Nutra Gardens. We have an affiliate link for them. I've been using it for, I don't know, two or three years now. I don't have it every day. Um, the, the ingredients are beet juice concentrate and tart cherry extract. So I'll just tell you that um, a lot of Olympic athletes use this to help them recover after their workouts or after they've um, been in a game or riding their bike or you know whatever their activity is. So you mix one tablespoon with eight ounces of water or you can put it in juice. And I usually use it either when we go hiking as a recovery after going on a long hike, then I'll have it when we get home or it helps with inflammation. And so right now I've been having it every day because I have an off and on problem with a sciatic nerve, chronic pain from a sciatic nerve, and it's really flared up right now. And so I have found for me that this really helps with inflammation in my body. And when I start taking this, when I'm having a real bad flare up with my sciatic nerve, it seems to help lessen the pain yeah, for in, me. In its general mechanism, and this is from the science, which I'm sure they have links to on their site, mm -hmm. uh, it increases blood flow. And it does that through some mechanism of increasing nitric oxide availability to the epithelial cells that align the, entire, the entirety of your vascular system. Right. So anytime you can increase blood flow, it reduces inflammation, gets more oxygen to your cells. That's why uh, um, competing athletes will take this about 45 minutes before, before. an event mm -hmm. to increase their oxygen mm -hmm. supply. Um, I, this is the, the old label because we bought quite a bit ahead last time. We are affiliates of Beat Boost, so I do have an affiliate link of the correct product because this was called Beat Boost Food Based Stamina. It's now called Beat Boost Restore, something like you that. You have the link open um, up there. I don't but, know. But the link I have takes you to the, their, their original uh, beet and cherry uh, formula. Yeah, they've changed the label 
since we bought the last containers that we bought, they have changed the labels. So it has no added sugar, it's gluten-free, it's non-GMO, and it's vegan. And I learned about this from John Pierre, who is a, um, a fitness guru, I guess I want to call him, um, and out of LA. And he had suggested this to me. I had a consult with him, and I love it. So I, I love the taste. If you don't like the taste of beets, you probably won't like it because, yes, it does taste like beets and cherries. And I forget how many beets and cherries are in each tablespoon of it. It's equivalent of to it. four beets. And, and I forget how many cherries. It, yeah, it and describes it on the website. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which... Did you know that our like um, it does have a fifteen percent discount for people that go through? Yes, our link. So I had you, forgot that. Yeah, if you use our link, you do get a fifteen percent uh, discount on this. So you can also add a little bit to like hibiscus tea. Sometimes I'll brew hibiscus tea, and I'll add like a teaspoon and a half or so of it to hibiscus tea, either hot or cold, and it just yeah. it tastes really good. Yeah. Tawana, so, the name it's it's revitalized. It's called revitalized now. Yes, yeah. that's what they're calling it now. So Thank anyway, you, I just I had posted about it on my Facebook and Instagram, what I ate for breakfast this morning, and so that's why people started asking about it. So I, I find it to be very helpful for me for inflammation, and I know just a lot of people use it because it helps with joint pain, which is also inflammation, but, um, you know, runners like it, and um, people who do all different kinds of different athletics like it so that's that's okay. beet boost thank you uh -huh. uh, a couple a couple of questions here sure. um uh, this one might take some math linda is asking how much rice do i make each week um well you do about you get about six of those uh, containers that are four cups don't you yeah yeah so i do i use eight cups of rice with eight cups of water. I do it one to one ratio in, in the pressure cooker. Okay, let me ask you this though. Is it a one cup measure or is it the rice measure from? Whatever cup you use, it's a one to one ratio. Mm -hmm. Now the cup I'm using, it happens to be a one cup measuring cup. Okay. Okay, so I use eight one cup measuring cups in the six quart pressure cooker and then and then you use eight cups of, of, of water, one to one. And that brings that, cooks all the way up to the top of the pressure cooker. You do not want to do more than that, uh, or you'll have a mess in the lid. Uh, so one-to-one -one ratio. And that's in uh, our Milthy. You'd the, make that in our in the Milthy multi-cooker. In the Milthy multi-cooker, rice setting, brown rice setting, 15 minutes, and, and um, whatever their automatically programmed release schedule is. Okay. And it's coming out, it comes out really nutty, nutty and so forth. I do not have a current video on rice. I haven't done one because there are so many rice videos out there of varying styles. A lot of people like their rice mushy or porridgey or whatever. I like mine very granular. Mm -hmm. So I Dryer. can just kind of like sprinkle those little individual granules off into my soup or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I need to do one probably. Um, we might need to do an Instapot one and a... Um, well, you'll have to compare one. the two and see if the timing is the same and the measurements are the same in both of them. Because yeah. we have the Instant Pot pressure cooker and then we also have two of the Milthy multi-cookers, mm. which are also pressure cookers. Yeah. Uh, Kathy's asking what, as a serve, what do we consider a serving of rice and or oat groats? I, you know, the, it just varies. It all depends. Yeah. I use typically a cup of rice in my, in my uh, some of you may be familiar with my dump soup that I have for lunch. Do you measure that out or I you have, just eyeball? I, I have measured it. Just to see? To see what it looks like and then I eyeball it, but uh, a cup, no more than a cup and a half at the most, but yeah. a cup. I, I don't, I don't measure. The, this is the, the beauty of eating a whole food plant-based that's a Diet. question. There's a question about that here somewhere. The beauty of, of that is that we really don't have to weigh and measure anything as long as you are eating the lower calorie density foods, which would be anything that's 600 calories or less per pound. And if you look up calorie density, you can find Chef AJ has an excellent video on calorie density. You can find online a calorie density chart. If you have her book, she has a calorie density chart on the back of her Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss book. And as long as you stay at 600 calories per pound and under, 
and those are going to be the lower calorie density foods. You really don't have to weigh and measure your food as long as you're only eating until you are comfortably full. And that's the secret. If you're overeating, even at 600 calories per pound, you're either going to gain weight or not lose weight or, you know, be stuck at a plateau. So, so we typically don't weigh and measure our food for caloric reasons. Like we might do it just to find out, you know, like when people are always asking us, how much do you eat? So it depends on you. And it varies, like how much we eat from day to day varies on our activity level. I mean, you know, if we're out hiking, you know, we need more calories. If we're just, you know, doing chores around the house, we might not be as hungry, we might not need as much food. And so I don't weigh my oat groats and I don't, um, and I don't measure, I don't weigh or measure my, my starches. I just, I kind of know now about what I eat, but when I sit down and eat, I stop when I start to get- You're looking at the volume that you know is gonna satisfy you. Yeah, but sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes I'm hungry and I go get more. But more often, I get full, and if I have some left over, <laughs> I give it to I'm him. sitting next to her and suddenly there's a hand in my face with <laughs> some leftover potato or something. Okay. Because I just, I'll stop when I get comfortably full. Um, because I no longer like that feeling of being overly full, like, like when I used to indulge at Thanksgiving or Christmas or on my birthday or something like that. I no longer like that. So, so a serving is whatever works for you. And, you know, certainly like Tom usually eats a larger volume of food than I do. One, he weighs more. He's a man, so his metabolism is faster than mine. Um, you know, because his body, he doesn't have as much estrogen as I do. So my estrogen wants to hold on to fat. And so the he older can, we get there, doesn't that <laughs> like I, I get more testosterone and you get more estrogen, I think. That's not what this show is about. That's okay. not. Okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll discuss that later. But, um, it, but so, so I know that doesn't answer your question the way you want the question to be answered, but what the right amount of food is for you would probably be different than what it is for me and certainly different than what it would be for Tom. And so like Chef AJ eats like, she'll eat like three or four cups of rice at a time if she's that hungry. And she'll eat, you know, a, a huge potato at one meal. And so, but that's what's right for her. And so, so everybody's a little bit different. So you just have to kind of pay attention when you're eating and stop when you're comfortably full. Okay, um, question back on the beet boost. Yes. And then we have some more rice questions. Um, do you take it as a routine every day, as a preventative measure? Do you take no. it just when you're feeling like you're kind of dragging or you have some pain? Um, when people, and, and we can't really answer, uh, do we take it for heart disease? Um, I can't tell you anything about that. that would be I just take it for inflammation. I can tell you that. And so... Um, so I don't take it every day, um, but when I'm when my sciatic nerve is really flaring up, then I'll have it. You know, I'll probably have it for like 30, 30 days at a time, just because yeah. that's like. <sighs> yeah, SB drinks it for the purpose of lowering her blood pressure. Yeah, it does. His, do his, that or, as his well. or her, I think. I mean, I. You're SB. making an assumption that yeah. it's a female. Yeah, and and I and I did that once, and I was wrong. So anyway, yes, yeah. it can be it, you know because it's going to open your vascular system scientifically. It does that. Mm -hmm. It follows it, and it would lower your blood pressure, and it would follow that lower blood pressure is beneficial to managing heart disease. Talk to your doctor about uh, uh, foods that that help your vascular system. Um, yeah. So, okay. so no, I don't take it every day. I just take it when I feel like I need it. And mm. I, you know, I know quite a few people mm. who also use it, um, but I don't know anyone who takes yeah. one, it every day. One note, and because this is coming, Sandra has a comment here about um, needing help with back pain. The whole food plant-based diet itself, if you're eating a clean, I'm gonna say qualify that, a clean whole food plant-based lifestyle, no oil, 
no added salt or sugar um, that does by nature improve your vascular system throughout your body. I used to have chronic and quite severe back pain and having been plant-based now for several years, it's completely gone. I still have to mind my posture because I, I have a kind of an irreversible level two slipped disc or whatever they call it. Um, and, and we heard Dr. Barnard speak about it yeah. at um, a conference that we went to. <clears throat> and he was talking about, you know, people who have chronic back pain don't realize how that's related to their diet and how a whole food plant-based mm. diet can really help allow the blood to get to the mm -hmm. inflamed areas in your back to actually move the toxins and such out of that area and allow the pain to go away um, okay so there's there's some questions here about um, uh, yeah peg peg marie asked about the beet boost so we talked about that on the i on the rice i used to use the aroma rice cooker uh, those of you who have been following us for some time you've heard us mention that several you know, on several videos and as an experiment when we received the multi the mul the milthy multi-pot 2.0 their new model mm -hmm. uh, with an automatic steam release we did a video on that just a little while ago a few weeks back um, i did rice in it to, to check it out just to see what it would do and i was very surprised again at how granular how nutty how it is cooked but it's cooked in 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 separate grains because the aroma would have a little bit of you know mushiness Moisture. at the bottom less so at the top so i was very pleasantly surprised and pleased with the result i got in the multipot 2.0 i'm going to test that same time uh parameter in the instapot because there's far more instapots out in the world than there are milfy multipots um and so i'm going to come back to you with a report on that i guess is where we're heading uh on the timing of that am i using the aroma now no, I think I'm going to be moving away from that because I really like what I'm getting out of the pressure cooker yeah. with the right ratio of water and, and grain. And, and we'll see how the heat variances work between the two brands. Um, so, uh, and then Pat, I think I answered you. I tried to in a text. I always use the brown rice setting because I'm typically always only cooking brown rice. That's what we buy. Um, and that does take longer than white rice. Brown rice takes more cook time than white rice. Um, so somebody wants to know, Sandra wants to know if this helps with anxiety. I don't think that the beet boost has anything that would help in it no, that it just, would help it, with it, anxiety. It, 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 the athletes use it, JP was recommending it, I don't know if Gregor talks about it or not, but it, it increases blood flow because of that action that mm -hmm. the natural ingredients in there have on, on helping the blood system relax and flow better. Um, let's see. Hello, Mary Rose. Um, one quick question. I just made your banana muffins. Um, but you got to ask us the question. We're, we'll, we'll watch for the question to come up. Um, oh, yeah. You forgot to put the question. Okay. I don't think we're, that's the we're rule. Gonna, we're going to check that. Let's check that. All right. I put them in a muffin pan. What do you think? I was out of muffin paper. Uh, you put them in a regular muffin pan or a non-stick muffin pan? And are you asking me if I think that they're going to come out? If that is, is that what you're asking me? Uh, Mary says keep reading. No, it's down there. Okay. I'm at the bottom of the feed, so I'm not seeing it. Push, push, make sure you push the little send, the little send airplane button. Okay. Okay, so. so I can't click on that to see. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Okay, use parchment paper. Yes, thank you. Used parchment paper. Oh, you used part. Yeah, that should be fine. Because um, when I before I started using the silicone muffin pans, then I just used the parchment paper um, cupcake liners, and those worked beautiful in a regular muffin pan, and they came out great. So, so did you just cut parchment paper and put it in the muffin? Cups. I'm curious about that. You use those those uh, those brown. Yeah. Uh, they're part. Uh, they're on the 
Amazon page. We have the, the parchment, parchment muffin cups. Yeah, yeah are paper. on our Amazon page, and those worked great. Yeah, Laura so, uses the silicone muffin cups from Wilton. Yeah, I use yeah. the silicone muffin pans now. When I first started using them, I really um, didn't like them, and sometimes I felt like things would stick. But then I learned, oh, you have to let everything cool almost completely before you try to take them out or at least let them cool for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so. Once they cool a little bit, then they release from the silicone and you can get them out. And so now I love my silicone muffin pans. And I have a square one that I use for other baked things. And they're great because there's no oil required. You don't have to grease them. You don't have to spray them with anything. And they're fantastic. So, okay. Anything else? We've been on for an hour. I think, uh, I'm just checking for question marks. Um, we already answered asked, that. We okay. already answered that. So yeah, I'm pretty far back up to the top here. Yeah, I think we answered everything that okay. was at the top of it. So we really appreciate you guys hanging in here with us today. How are things going where you're at? You know, here in Northern California, we are on um, mandatory, uh, what do they call it? Um, shelter in place. Yeah. Mandatory sheltering in place. And so it's amazing how quiet everything is in our community. So there's not even kids yeah. outside playing. Um, there's no, there's yeah. like hardly a car that goes by the house. Yeah. It's just super yeah. quiet. Oh, there, so, was a, there was a comment earlier. We, we were finding food in the grocery store, uh, not everything that we always buy, but uh, we might have to get a different brand or whatever. But our, you know, people have rated the staples like beans and, and uh, Last week, rice there was a lot of empty, shelves even like at yeah. whole foods yeah the pasta but, was wiped out but that hardly affects us yeah but so. we went the other day friday they our whole foods is opening up an hour early for senior citizens so anyone 60 and up can come in that very first hour and any anyone younger than 60 isn't allowed in just so that we have an hour where we can shop where we're not coming in contact, hopefully, with you know younger people and lots of people who may be infected. Everyone really tried to keep their distance. It was a little more difficult to do that in the produce, produce department. And at one point, Tom was like, tugging me, you're like, too close, you're getting too close to people. <laughs> and so, but, she said, I'm trying to get to cabbage before that other guy gets the cabbage. No, there she was, was trying plenty. to hoard cabbage. There was plenty of cabbages <laughs> for all. Don't listen to him. And they, they didn't have romaine lettuce out, but I asked the produce man, do you have any romaine? And he was like, yeah, we just don't have it out yet. So he went in the back and came out with a couple of cases of romaine. So we were actually able to get everything that we had on our list that day. And as you can imagine, you know, I already stock a really well stocked pantry. And so we had, or we already had in stock a lot of rice and quinoa and oat groats. And um, I felt like we had plenty of beans, but Tom wanted to buy more beans. And so, so we did. And so, you know, we were able to get everything, almond milk and you know everything that was on our list and we had already stocked up on like canned tomatoes the last time they had gone on sale i mean that's just something that we normally do so even if they ran out of fresh produce or they closed the doors we would be okay for weeks we just wouldn't have the fresh produce we would eat our frozen um, produce that we have until it would be gone and you know you can sustain yourself quite well on starches for quite a while and so you know we would be we would be fine but there so, have been plenty of fresh vegetables there to has been here starters. but i know we did hear from a couple of followers that live down in the um, southern california area and they said that it was difficult they would go into trader joe's or the grocery store and like all the fresh produce was just wiped out so that just seems crazy because, you know, you can only use so much before it spoils unless people are thinking that then they're going to go ahead and freeze stuff up. So, so I just don't understand the thinking on that. But anyway, yeah. we hope wherever you are that you're staying in and staying away from people and staying safe. 
and um, we just have to ride this out and hopefully we can help flatten the curve. Do I recall that Chef AJ was having a program after yeah, this? Yeah, Chef AJ is going to go live today uh, at 5.30. So, on the, her, so the answer to that is yes. Um, on her YouTube okay. channel, she is going to be interviewing one of the doctors from True North and today is Chef AJ's birthday. So um, you should at 5.30 pop over to her YouTube channel and watch her show and be sure to wish her a happy birthday. Um, but it's been a and couple she's of, 60 today. There's, a, there's been a couple, are you supposed to say that? Sure. Yeah, she tells okay. everybody, her and I are the same age. Okay. Um, we sent her a nice um, birthday greeting this morning. There's been a couple of questions asking about when we're gonna have another cooking class here in Northern California. And we oh, actually- did that come up on here? A couple times, yeah. And we are, we, we actually are probably not gonna be doing a live in-person cooking class until we move into the fall. We're working on a special project uh, with Chef AJ right now. So we've really got to focus and get that done. Um, and so we won't be having any spring or summertime Well, classes. and we don't know what's going to happen with, with the gatherings, with the gatherings yeah. and how long yeah. we're not going to be able to get together um, in large groups. So yeah. uh, we can't really plan anything right now anyway, yeah. just because we don't know how long this is going to last. So okay. and it's unfortunate, but it's so, yeah. So Jerry, been. Jerry was one of the questions asking about that. So, um, we will be continuing to, we're, we're working on some online opportunities, some online education. That's what the special project is. So it's not that we're not working. We're just not working on the in-person classes right now. And you're right. We, we can't work. We can't have them right now. Yeah, we can't have them right now. So we can't, yeah. and we can't plan anything because we don't know how long this is going to go on. And so um, probably the earliest we would do anything would be next fall. And um, and we're not we're not sure what our schedule is going to look like for fall. So Kentucky's pretty much shut down. Um, Vegan Nana says they have now closed all retail except things like grocery stores and pharmacies, which is what they have done here as well. Mary Rose is so, asking how we we per the mandates from the governor, we are seeing our immediate family. They're pretty much homebound, just like us, and so we are. With yeah, them. our our daughter is a stay-at-home mom. And so the kids have not been, you know, church is closed here. I mean, everything's closed. And so they have not been taking them out in public for, um, well, for actually for a few weeks because they started potty training, the twins. And so um, they, they have not been exposed to the public. So we do see our grandkids um, and our daughter and our son-in-law, and he's in IT. And so he's working remotely. He's working remotely, so he's not coming in contact with the general public. So our and then, family's pretty, we're pretty self-isolated. Yes, yeah. and so we still see them. We still go over to their house. They came to our house last night because they just felt like they needed to get out of the house. So they came over here and had dinner with us. So we are still seeing the kids. And, um, and then our son is also in IT and... Uh, his company has gone to mandatory work from home and so and he's concerned about exposing us to anything and so he has stayed away so far um, but we did talk to him yesterday and said you know because he's just staying in his apartment and like he's having you know Amazon food delivery done and, <laughs> and so forth and so you know we told him well you know if you start to go stir crazy because you know he's not even getting out to work he's staying there to work and so we said if you're if you start to get stir crazy please come home and and visit us and he was like well I you know I would feel terrible if I exposed you guys to something I'm like well you're not seeing anybody and so you're not getting exposed to anything so so we're doing great and, um, you know, it's scary, and I just feel like I'm a little more, um, I don't have anxiety over it necessarily, but I, I just, I guess I feel... We're accepting that we're in a very unique time. Yeah, now. it's a little unsettling, I, I would say. You know, I'm concerned for my parents who live in Nebraska who are in their 80s. Um, I have three brothers that live there, and lots of nephews and nieces and they're like going grocery shopping for my parents and doing that kind of thing um so so i guess you know there's just is a little it's more stressful and there is that little cloud dark cloud of worry 
um, because like how long is this going to go on and what's going to happen and you know I'm really concerned for people who've lost their jobs and um, who don't have the kind of job that, where they can work from home and then we know a lot of people who are in the medical field and you know I'm really worried about all of our friends and and the ones that are nurses that are on the front lines and you know so so there's all that too okay all right. Um, Anything else? Uh, no, folks are talking about what you know, what different people are doing during you know being sequestered. So, um, Jennifer, hi, uh, welcome to our channel. There's over a hundred videos here to check out. Feel free to binge at your leisure. It's all about whole food, plant-based, healthy living. Um, and and check out the blog. Yeah. at nutmegnotebook.com. Yeah. We don't want to forget about the blog. It, yeah. It's it's a foundational resource for what Tammy has been putting together for years, for over 10 years. So um, searchable, great search engine, little box at the upper right hand corner. Um, and you can search the entire blog from that little box. There is a recipe page. But not uh, all of the recipes have not been moved into the recipe navigation so system. So search the whole blog. Yes, so. So I would say like for the last two and a half years or so, we have been so busy with uh, family obligations that I just haven't been able to keep the recipe navigation system updated. But we're working on it. But and the total navigation, I use But it you can I use the total, na yes, you yeah. can just use the search and you'll find everything okay. that way. So, okay. all right. So, anyway, well, it's been really fun, you guys. Um, we're so glad that you joined us today and hopefully, you know, we gave you some. A break from the just the monotony I think yeah. of staying at home I think that's the thing that people are missing is the connection yeah. because although you know they do tell us to isolate to you know restrict the amount of time that we spend with other people we still need to connect because that you know we we are relational people and so make sure that you use FaceTime and um, Facebook and the phone and everybody has cell yeah. phones with free long yeah. distance and if call have, and talk to people. If you have time, give us a thumbs up. So yeah. Help our message reach even more people with the plant-based message out there. Subscribe to our channel. Go over to nutmegnotebook.com and subscribe to the blog and get those two exclusive recipes that are just for subscribers and share this video if you would on your favorite Facebook pages that helps us reach more people as well and check out if you haven't watched all of our videos I think we have over a hundred videos now and check those out so I'm Tammy and I'm Tom and we help you get healthy and, and stay, stay healthy, healthy one, one meal, meal at, at a time. time thanks for joining us today you guys we'll see you next time bye bye Jennifer liked the soup. <laughs>